Welcome to the Hague uh, Global Cinema Festival. Thank we you. are privileged and honored to have you with us and to screen your film in our festival. It's, it's a great uh, time for us to talk to you and uh, about your film, which is, uh, in my opinion, is, uh, I think, the first uh, experience uh, or first time some uh, somebody has tried this the person who has uh, uh, do this type of wandering which you have done and uh, sharing of uh, this experience uh, with the general public uh, by means of a film is i think uh, first time somebody has done it so my first question is that uh, what was your motive behind it to capture it in a film you you traveled uh, all over again to the same places difficult places of course by helicopter this time but even then you went there and you took the pains and uh, all those efforts you have done so what message in fact you wanted to convey through this many of my friends and students uh, they asked me please tell us about your journey and the place where you've been and what did you learn so and then a few of them they asked me if you kind of like do some video film and then visit those places and tell us more about that so then i agree so the main thing here is um is about the ne nepal and india we have great Himalayan mountain and there's a very nice place in the ancient time there's a lot of meditators who explore their inner um, quality and to explore calm peaceful mind in these caves these um, um, places so I thought it's really important to kind of like connect with those environment. Even you cannot spend time there, but at least you can have some vision, feel, and then some teachings that are connected with this meditation, kind of like experience related with the teachings to help us to kind of like make our mind peaceful. Now the modern time, we are very busy and we don't have time really physically, physically go there. Oh, that's fantastic. Basically, you are trying to give them, give all of us uh, a glimpse of what is that life like. And yes. what, what message you think, I mean, uh, do you think uh, some of your disciples, uh, some of your followers got inspired by this and they're also thinking to do the same retreat or uh, they just got scared by seeing the hardships? So I'm telling that sometime, you know, um some some of my stories are a little bit too extreme so i'm not i'm telling that don't try at home but the main key point here here is this meditation tradition is what we call adding wood to the fire so everything take it as opportunity to grow learn transform because normally we have our own kind of circle, kind of balloon. We live in our own balloon and bubble. But then when we go out of that, beyond our circle, then we actually we learn and grow. So in our life, we have a lot of opportunity. Normally I'm saying that when we are become in the West, Nowadays, when we become 18 years old, we have to go out of our comfort zone again. And when we are m facing a new job or losing job or life is up and down, up and down, up and down. So actually, we can take all this as opportunity to really grow, learn and transform. That's really great. During this uh, film, when uh, I, when you had this experience, this near death experience, this gets that gave me an impression that 
you experience enlightenment. You correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, you that's the the way you have explained to it that uh, it appears you connected yourself with the universe. You are part of that. And that perhaps is the enlightenment. So is it correct interpretation? Please uh, tell me more about that if you can. Uh, enlightenment has many stages. Hmm. So we, we will we have first step, second step, third step. So what I experience is um, Normally, what we believe is we all have wonderful nature. Mm. Uh, sometimes what we call basic innate goodness, luminous uh, mind, pure awareness. So when I almost die, my body is um, shut down. You know, I cannot see, I cannot hear, my body becomes paralyzed. At the same time, the normal thought you know, bala 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 yada yada yada, also gone. So then, what experience is pretty peaceful, calm, very clear, very present, beyond time and concept. So that is a really amazing. That uh, what I experienced the beginning of the journey, and that is because of the almost I I I almost died because of the food poison, and in a way. That is for me is one of the best kind of like opportunity for me. So is it uh, correct to call it uh, the experience of enlightenment? So we don't normally we don't really talk about uh, I'm enlightened or not enlightened or I achieved that level. In my tradition, we don't talk about those things. So yeah. Okay, I I understand it. So you, in your, uh, in this whole journey in retreat, uh, the a lot of things have been captured in the film. And uh, is there any experience or is there any uh, uh, story which is not captured and which you would like to capture now or tell a little bit in brief to the people who are seeing your film now throughout the world? This will be screened around all over the world online. So do you recall some more one or two stories which we can put as a, you know, something new which is not in the film? Mm. I was in one of the kind of a meditation hut. Mm. It's a kind of a small house, half broken. Mm -hmm. The half, they preserve well. It's like wooden floor and um, the from roof is leaking, but I put some kind of like covered there so quite good and halves broken when the rain comes all the rain everything comes so one day all my food are gone mm -hmm. so i thought what should i do so sometimes we go out of retreat house and go to the village and beg food you know <clears throat> mm -hmm. so i was thinking maybe i should go to beg food but then at the same time, sometimes something miracle happens. <laughs> mm -hmm. Everything gone, but suddenly mm -hmm. somebody come or mm -hmm. someone give me something. So I thought it might happen. You know? I wait for one day, nothing happened. Mm -hmm. And next day, I'm really, really hungry, you know. So then I thought, in the lunchtime, nothing happened. Then I will go out. And I wait until lunchtime. Mm -hmm. And I thought, nothing happened. I almost go out. And somebody <clears throat> kind of making noise. Mm -hmm. There's a tradition in the mountain. If the retreat practice in the cave or particular retreat house, mm -hmm. they kind of like, <clears throat> they make noise by clapping the stone. Tuck, 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 like that. Mm -hmm. That means they're calling you. Down there, somebody tuck, 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 like that. So I look and down, went down, mm. two people there, mm. and they brought many things to eat. Mm. And I was very happy and asked them to come. So they came, and I boil hot water. <laughs> I give them hot, hot water, and they look at the, 
the roof, roof, everything, half roof is open. They say, oh, they have some kind of like things that cover, you know, they will bring next time. So uh, we had a wonderful conversation. They all gone. Then after that, oh, so nice. I was so happy. So there's a flower there. One bag has flour. And mm -hmm. normally we eat bad, barley flour mm -hmm. called, called kind of zamba. So we put hot water, a little bit of butter, salt, and then barley flour, and we mix together. Mm -hmm. Dove, we make dove and eat in the mountains, the Himalayan mountain, very famous food. Mm. And it was, it was wonderful. So normally, Bali has to uh, roast it. First, mm. they have to fry, kind of like roast barley, then make it flour. Mm. Otherwise, you, you cannot eat uh, directly. Yeah. So then I, I saw this flour and I make this dough and I eat it so wonderful, tastes wonderful. But then when my stomach's full, I discovered there was no zamba. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There was just normal flour, which is kind of like, uh, how to say, no roasted. So I was really fascinating how the perception, you know. Mm. So because I'm hungry and I believe that zamba tastes like zamba, so nice. Mm. And the moment I recognize that's not the really zamba. That barley flour, everything. In in your um, you mentioned one uh, very nice uh, sentence, which when you were leaving the Bodh Gaya uh, place and on the, in, on the gate, you mentioned that when you encounter a wall, you throw your backpack out. This is the quotation of your father. You mentioned. Yes. So can you tell something more about this concept? You know, I mean, uh, we had... Yes. So my father, when I was young, my father said, if you're going somewhere and you reach the dead end, there's huge wall in front of you, then what you have to do first, take out your backpack and throw over the wall. Hmm. So once your backpack is other side of the wall, then you can you may not cross that way but there's a which and ways you can cross the wall because we have capacity we have the basic innate goodness everybody has skill wisdom love compassion awareness so many things there within us so you may cross so i have this story in my mind so what i did when i come out from my monastery the first thing is, I have a small backpack, you know. Mm. So I thought maybe first I throw over the wall. But that means I have to cross. <laughs> so that is the, I think, really, I wrote a book called In Love with the World. So in our life, when we go beyond our boundary, mm. then actually we learn a lot of things. We grow a lot, discover. Sometimes we will ex we will think, oh, we are more than what we believe. Yeah, I think it's, it's very inspiring. It's a very inspiring story. And I, I, I read your book, uh, The Joy of Life. I, I have I have the book here, The Joy of Living. Of living, yes. And this book I have. This was uh, one one girl gave me uh, in Holland. And I never uh, realized that uh, at that time that I will be talking to you. Yes. So uh, what my wife, you know, wants to know that after your experience, uh, the near death experience, do you feel any permanent uh, change in your uh, mind, perception, personality, or that was a transitory uh, experience? Is, has it permanently affected you? Yeah, so I have really kind of like developed appreciation, gratitude. So from the deeper level, mm. there's always have sense of peace, joy, and contentment. No matter what happened outside, life is up and down, of course. We cannot ignore that, mm. and we have to accept that. But no matter what happened, obstacle, 
sick, problem, conflict, whatever, Jibber level really happy. And there's a lot of gratitude, appreciation, peace. Yeah. And that really helped me because of that um, almost die experience. Thank you. I have uh, one final question for you. Yes. You are a meditation master. Essentially, you teach meditation and uh, Buddha himself was he i think he was the first uh, perhaps uh, person in the history of mankind who started uh, or who started very strongly preaching meditation mm. i mean mahavira was his contemporary he was also talking about uh, meditation but the way buddha preached and the buddha influenced the society and uh, meditation is essentially his, uh, his his contribution yes to, to the humanity so uh, how uh, how would you i mean you know lots of people talk about meditation i mean they say i'm in meditation i'm in meditation they will sit quiet and i mean there are a lot of people and there are a lot of uh, charlatans lot of frauds you know people say i will teach you meditation so uh, how would you describe uh, meditation for uh, a person who is curious about it or who wants to pursue it in a very plain words what is meditation so meditation is to recognize what we call awareness. So awareness meaning knowing. It is just your own mind, your consciousness. The fundamental quality of our mind is awareness. So awareness is like sky. It's always there, free, present, pure. But then we have thought, emotion, memory, perception. All these are like cloud in the sky. So all these are in the awareness. Whatever the storm or cloud comes, it doesn't change nature of sky. So whatever we have thought, emotion up and down, like when I was young, I have panic attacks. Now there's many, many people have stress or depression, all this, it doesn't change the fundamental quality of our mind, which is awareness. So maybe the first step of meditation, one of the practice of what we call to be aware of breath. So normally I ask a question to my student. Are you breathing right now? And they say, yes. Mm -hmm. I said, that is the meditation. <laughs> Very good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the moment of you know you're breathing, that is awareness. Mm -hmm. Mind and the breath together. Mm -hmm. Very simple. In a way, meditation is very simple. Mm -hmm. So awareness is same as being witness? Yeah. So witness, awareness is quite similar. But awareness is you don't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. Just be, let that thought come and go, emotion come and go. Anyway, awareness is more than thought, more than emotion, more than feeling and perception. Mm -hmm. okay. So this interview was uh, essentially about the film. Uh, it's a wonderful film which uh, has been made with your cooperation. Thank you very much uh, for that. Thank you very much uh, for your time. Thank you very much for your yeah. time. Thank you for what you're doing. It's a really, uh, what you say, it's very happy to hear the film is the media. Yeah. It's wonderful. Thank you very much for this effort. And I also want to thank your, uh, your uh, team, I mean, Paul and Robin, I mean, also with all the paints. Sh shukriya. Shukriya. Thank you very much. And you say Tashi Dalek. Yes. Wonderful. <laughs> okay, thank you. Bye-bye.